This show contains movie spoilers and swearing. I'm not saying that this will be the easiest party that we've ever attended. But I still wouldn't miss it for the world. I like to think of this as one of those American Western films. The paratroops, lacking substantial equipment, always short of food. These are the besieged homesteaders. The Germans, well, naturally, they're the bad guys. And 30 Corps, we, my friends, are the cavalry on the way to the rescue. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode we're going to be taking you back to 1977 to talk about a classic war movie which is The Bridge Too Far or Bridge Too Far and joining me for the show today is a fellow podcaster Matt Wood who commented on the post and said I've got to, you know, I, I like this movie so I said to him why don't you come and join me so here he is today Matt welcome to Bite Size Cinema. Thank you very much for having me, RJ. I'm really, really pleased to be here. It's, uh, and to talk about a film that I love dearly. So, uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome indeed. Um, before we actually talk about the show now, uh, you're new to podcasting. You've set up a new show with uh, Kate Pollock, who's been on Bite Size Cinema before. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about this podcast that you do? Yeah, well, basically, uh, we started back in March of uh, last year. Uh, basically, yeah, uh, me and Kate kind of met through um, uh, Duncan's uh, podcast, Under the Stairs, yeah. and we just got got chatting through that and, and bantering through that. Uh, and I just thought I, I'm quite fun to doing a podcast. And so I basically... Uh, went up to her and I messaged her and said, you know, are you interested? Uh, herself and Jamie McCauley, but Jamie sort of, I think he back, backed out of it because he realised there's quite a lot of effort. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Kate, Kate sort of said, yeah, I'm really keen to do it. And uh, yeah, that was back in 2019. Uh, no, no, 2020. Uh, and, and eventually, yeah, we pulled our fingers out and, and put it together. It's the Eternal Darkness and Not So Spotless Minds podcast, which is basically primarily horror, but uh, sort of under the dark umbrella is the way we like to put it. Yeah, I've listened to his show. I've also had uh, Kate on the show as well. We spoke about The Mummy. Uh, that was a funny episode because I had to record that show three times with her. Uh, because right, okay. <laughs> everything went wrong that could go wrong. I think she had plumbers, someone drilling through the wall, nosebleeds, her daughter Ava. Uh, she had to attend to her, and it's just like, we will get it done. We will get it done. <laughs> sounds, sounds about right, though. Sounds about right, okay. And she's, um, yeah, she's, she's a massive fan of movies. Um, when I spoke to Kate, I've known Kate for a uh, couple of years now through podcasts because um, the podcast on Haunted Hill, she's a listener. Um, so we'd been messaging and stuff, and um, yeah, I couldn't think of anybody better. She 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 really does go into depth with the details of films and stuff. So certainly does. She certainly does. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the other thing, um, Matt was going to say, you, you do a deep bit of DJing as well, didn't you? Is that right? I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically. Yeah, I'm an old raver. Uh, so yeah, back in the early '90s, when uh, there's a whole rave phenomenon going around the country in the UK, basically, yeah, I got into into that uh, sort of 1990 and uh, got into DJing and stuff. And uh, yeah, I still mix it now. You know, it's you know hardcore jungle techno. Yeah. Uh, it's a fusion of different sounds. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I play out occasionally. I mean, obviously, with COVID, things have kind of slowed down quite a bit. But, um, yeah, and no, I've got a regular uh, radio show, which I do every Friday, um, called OnlyOldSchoolRadio.com. Right. Um, so I do that. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I love it. I just love, yeah, I just love the music. It's like like anything, you know, any kind of music scene that you're into, be it sort of punk or rock yeah. and roll or whatever, you know. Um, people just have 
you know, for for an era or a time space, you know, in your life that you know people kind of latch onto that. Does that make sense? Absolutely, it's nostalgia, man. You know, I totally get yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know what the scary thing is is the nineties feels like a long time ago now. Do you know what I mean? And people sort of um, appreciate the nineties like I did the eighties. And um, it's funny. This is a non-spoiler as well. I was watching um, Cobra Kai. I've watched the whole of the, ah. was it the fourth season, but I won't say which nice. character this was, but it did make me laugh when he said, um, do you want to celebrate? I won't tell you what they were celebrating, but he pulled out a bottle, right? And he says, I've got a vintage 1998. <laughs> I said, fucking hell, it was 98 that old. <laughs> I know, hell, I you know. know, you know. <laughs> No, I was born in 74, so I'm 47, so yeah, it, the 90s is a long, long yeah, way Yeah, so you can away, fucking you know. hell. <laughs> Jesus. Never mind. So, yeah, mind. I'm beginning to notice that detail in things, but there you go. That's that's cool. But um, yeah. we're not here to talk about Cobra Kai today, guys. We are here to talk about a classic war movie, um, A Bridge Too Far. So we're going to play a trailer. And we will be back soon. We've paid for that bridge and we're going to collect. We're going to fly 35,000 men 300 miles and drop them behind enemy lines. It'll be the largest airborne operation ever mounted. Quite frankly, this kind of thing's never been attempted before. We shall seize the bridges. It's all a question of bridges. With thunderclap surprise. And hold them until they can be secured. And we go next Sunday. Seven days? The sooner we go, the better. We've got them on the run. Joseph E. Levine presents A Bridge Too Far. Based on Cornelius Ryan's international bestseller. The story of the most dramatic and devastating battle of World War II. The plan is called Operation Market Garden. Market is the airborne element and garden the ground forces. I like to think of this as one of those American Western films. Germans will naturally, they're the bad guys. We, my friends, are the cavalry on the way to the rescue. A Bridge Too Far. Starring Dirk Bogart, James Kahn, Michael Caine, Sean Connery, Edward Fox, Elliot Gould, Gene Hackman, Anthony Hopkins, Hardy Kruger, Lawrence Olivier, Ryan O'Neill, Robert Redford, Maximilian Schell, Leave Ullman. Take cover! Don't you think that since we know that Arnhem is so crucial to their safety, they might know that too? The river's wide and that the current is strong. Hey, oh, Mary, I love Grace. And as any more cheery information comes my way, I'll just be too happy to pass it along. In the meantime, just think of this as on-the-job training. They're 36 hours behind schedule. There's a battle, and we are in the process of winning it. Winning and losing is not our concern. Living or dying is... If you don't look at him right now, he's going to die. Dead now. Right now. I can give him a quick examination tonight. Thank you very much, sir. We need reinforcements and, above all, ammunition. Tell the general we're coming. They're coming tonight. Two days, they said. We've been here nine. Why don't we just try to bash through? Well, as you know, I've always thought that we tried to go a bridge too far. And welcome back, everybody. So the synopsis of this film is it's September 1944. Allies have Hitler on the run. After the success of D-Day, to quickly end the war, the Allies put together Operation Market Garden. So uh, it was uh, put together by a United Artists, directed by the guy from Jurassic Park. 
it is indeed, is yeah. Richard Attenborough. And uh, we'll go through the cast in a minute. It's got pretty much everybody from the 70s in this film. So, yeah. Um, Matt, Bridge Too Far. Um, oh. I'll take it you like this film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh... yeah. It's basically uh, it's been in my library uh, mm. of films that I've always kind of turned to ever since I was a little kid. Really, yeah. Um, I've always really loved war films. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I don't know. It's, it's like uh, you and I sort of said. It's that whole uh, kid kid playing soldiers type thing. Yes, it's because you was born in 1974, and I apologise to anybody who's listening to this is German. But during yeah. the 80s, when you was playing toy soldiers in your garden, in the garden, it'd be, I'm going to be the British, you're going to be the Germans. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. how it was, you know. So. <laughs> and you kind of had a license for that to be okay, you know what I mean? Because everybody was still remembering World War Two. So, well, that's it. so everybody, everybody's running around the gardens with the sticks, you know, yeah, like. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Going, eh. <laughs> you're dead. No, you're not. I did shoot you. You should be laying on the floor. <laughs> Bloody hell, Matt. The other thing as well is I even tried to talk German if I was a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like... I know exactly what you mean. That's probably really wrong of me saying that right now. Do you know what I mean? But I was a, like an eight-year-old kid thinking, like, if I'm the bad guy and I'm German, I should be speaking a different <laughs> Back language. Back in the day, it was, it was okay to do that. You know? <laughs> Mm. Good stuff. So oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. It was basically uh, we had it on on VHS, um, yeah. and it was basically a film that I always used to to put on all, all the time. You know, um, yeah. I just I just loved it. I just loved uh, the characters, and just what I really loved was all the different had uh, different tanks and different planes, and yeah. just it really showed showed off everything that that was happening at that time all the you know the, the war machines as it were and i just loved it i just really yeah yeah i love with that film because of I, that i think that um i mean there's a lot of films that i watched that you know um say like where eagles dare with, mm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with Richard Burton which is basically it might as well just have the Action Man logo on it and it's just a proper boys adventure which has got obviously elements of history in it to a degree but then it is just like a, what I call like a bit of a fantasy war movie because it's just you know the good yeah, guys yeah. versus the bad guys you've got Kelly's heroes um, I'll probably ch- chuck in the 633 Squadron in there so these are kind of films that are very entertaining which I would say are based on what happened during World War 2 um, and then you've got A Bridge Too Far which when I watched when I was younger I was like it felt a little bit deep for me as a kid because I was thinking oh, okay. hey, hang, on, hang on a second I was like thinking Jesus you know this film's like um and this isn't this in the film, you know. As a young younger audience, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, shit. Now we, it feels like we didn't win the war. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. And then when I watched it as an adult, I've I've really grown to appreciate this film because what I think a bridge too far is, it's almost like a blueprint for films that we get today, like um, uh, Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers, and uh, yeah. you could even say chuck in Black Hawk Down, even though it's a different conflict. Um, but it's like a film that's saying, I'm not afraid to be able to sort of say that we didn't win every fucking battle in this war. Um, yeah. Which yeah. is kind of honest in a way, which is quite what I kind of like about this film. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, at, at the end of it, also to say that, you know, we're, we're 90%, you know, we've pretty much achieved what we want to achieve. Yeah. And then obviously Sean Connery, like, going, well, hang, what the fuck? You know, I lost... 10,000 troops arrived and I got 2,000 left. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, uh, it's like... And I suppose it is... Because um, I spoke to a couple of people about this because they were saying, oh, what's your next podcast? And I said, oh, I'm doing a bridge too far. And they went... And uh, some people said, oh, it's like um, like an anti-war film. But then I said, yeah, I guess it mm. is because... Um, because I don't think that really... This is the film... I think it's like complimenting the film because it's like Richard Attenborough has basically sort of gone, well, this is kind of like the reality of war. We don't win every battle. We don't, the Allies don't agree with everything. 
And you're sort of, I'm never going to sort of back up the Germans, but it's good to see what the Germans are thinking as well in the film. Um, yeah, no, <clears throat> no they, they've given a real good, um, you know, insight into both sides and, yeah. you know, how they're both thinking at the time. Because you, I mean, you've got um, Maximilian Schell, who <laughs> is, yeah, he's great. I remember him in The Black Hole. He looks a little bit different without his hipster beard from that movie. You know, he's all clean shaven in this. You know, so, <laughs> you know. um, but then you've got Harvey Kruger, who I remember from a film called Wild Geese. I think he plays a South African soldier in that. Ah, um, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. But then I like the way, and this is what I like about this film, is you've actually got a bit of conflict between the Germans as well. Because I think um, Maximilian Schell is kind of like a German soldier, whereas Harvey Kruger's like SS. He's in the black uniform. And when that's right. And when Maximilian Schell's basically saying, oh, I think we might just need to sort of just retreat. And then Kruger's coming in and going, no, fuck that. We need to fucking kill him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're thinking, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Basically, yeah, exactly. you know, blow the fucking bridge get, up, you know. Yeah. There's one guy going, yeah, yeah, they're here for the bridges. And the other guy's, no, no, they're here for me. Oh, oh that's right. right. Yeah, that's it. Gen- modal. Uh, yeah, modal, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Um, and that's the other thing with this conflict, isn't it? I, I, I don't think, I mean, I'm not a historian. I would put that one out there. I'm just a guy that's watched a three hour film and thought I know everything about World War II. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Same uh, thing. But the impression I get here is that the Germans thought that this was quite a ballsy move from the Allies, and I don't think they ever thought in a million years they'd just go in and fucking take the back door into Germany. Um, and even Modil thought that they were just trying to do him, weren't they, as a, some sort of assassination attempt or something? So, yeah, yeah, no, that's right, that's right. But it, it, it was it was a brave move and somewhat stupid <laughs> move of, of sorts at yeah. the time, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I don't know because I look into like Browning's decision, and in the film it is portrayed that he's gone on bad intelligence, which I'm sure he has. But I think. Um, I was talking to someone who's a little bit more savvy about World War Two, and they said that Browning basically said, look, we've either got to do it or we don't, and we just fucking go in and do it. Um, and I think oh, that's okay. kind of him basically sticking two fingers up at the Germans and saying, you know, fuck you. Um, uh, someone, might yeah. be li- someone might be listening to this going, oh, Joe, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but I'm putting the flag up here so I'm just gonna go watch the movie and that's just what I that's that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna review. <laughs> um But yeah, let's talk about the cast here. So shall I just shout out who's in this film? Just give me oh a second, my hang goodness. on. Dirk Bogard, Elliot Gould, James Calm, Gene Hackman, Sean Connery, Anthony Hopkins, Edward Fox, Hardy Kruger. Ryan O'Neill, Maximum Shell, Robert Redford, Liv Ullman. Uh, you also got John Rasenberger, who's a bloke from Cheers in this as well, I saw. Turns up as a lieutenant. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, it's got everybody in it. I'd... It's it's one of the most impressive um, cast lists ever, I think. Just looking at it, like, they're all legends, really, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sean Connery's basically Sean Connery, isn't he? In you know yeah. that sort of hardy <laughs> guy, isn't he? You know, yeah. Which side? Which side are you on? <laughs> <So, laughs> what do you mean you're dropping us twenty miles away from our you know, where we're supposed I to be? Know, the, the looks he's giving everybody. <laughs> oh, it's classic. Oh dear. Um, and then you've got um, a fantastic soundtrack in this as well. That I'd love that score. The um, oh, the, the overture. It's brilliant. Um, you know, if you're having a bad day, just stick that on, and it make you feel like you're 100. You know, it's <laughs> so, it is it is that that opening opening score. Just it's just amazing. It really well, it just brings back happy memories for me, certainly. But you just hear you think, yeah, it's very rousing, yeah. and and you notice notice that how you know at the beginning of the film, it is very much like that. It's all like, oh, we're gearing up for war and. We're going to go and smash the Germans, and this is how it's going to be. And it's all, yeah, you yeah. know, it's all trumpets blowing. And then at the end, obviously, it's completely the opposite. Yeah. You know, when when they've, you know, they've kind of lost that part of the battle, and they're all just kind of about to be captured. 
Um, and yeah. they're all just humming away at the end, you know. Well, this I is it. Remember. I mean, it's like, have they got the right soundtrack for this movie? Is someone sort of wrongly edited in? Because it sounds really upbeat, beat, doesn't it, for what it is, you know, it's like... That's right. I mean, oh, that's right. Yeah, they, 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 they um, hum, come, uh, uh, abide with me. Hmm. That's right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the end. But, um... Yeah, I mean, going back to that soundtrack, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. I actually played it in my car this morning. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Because it's almost like doing a podcast. I feel like I've got to get into character. So nice. I went out this morning, got into me, uh, me Eco Sport, which I've got. This is like a Fiesta on steroids. Put it on, <laughs> drove down the road. That score came on. I'll tell you what, I might as well have been Michael Caine in that tanking vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Hands raised, up. <laughs> driving through oh, my local town. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> oh man, it's just. It's, but this is where these films take you, isn't it? You know, I mean, it, it, they they kind of stick to you, don't they? Because yeah, they do. They they, they inspire you. You know. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying it's inspired to go out and. Go out and fight or something. Oh no, but, no, uh, no, no, no! But I think it's just kind of like it feels a bit sort of liberating in a different sort of way, I guess. But yeah, I'm not talking. I'm not saying anybody to go through their local town in a tank <laughs> dressed up like Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> now that I gotta see. Yeah, but at, at the same time with Michael Caine, I do like it because one of my favourite scenes is when um, Edward Fox is basically giving this massive sort of morale type speech on how oh, they're going to, you know, brilliant speech. and Market Garden is going to be like the, we're going to be the sort of ground troops, isn't it? And then we're the Americans and it's going to be like the cavalry coming in. And then he comes out and says, and 30 core are going to be coming up forward. And Michael Caine goes, bloody hell, they're using us again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, go on, Joe. <laughs> You're right, Joe, what's the matter? Oh, no, that's all right, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. Oh, yeah, dear. no, actually, I, I, I really like Edward Fox's character. Yeah. Um, I love it when he's uh, they're basically just driving along uh, in the jeep, just basically just before they set off, and he was just sort of waving at all his troops and piping out these little comments to to all all the uh, you know the fellow tank drivers and stuff. Yeah, I, I love that bit. Oh, it's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's he's a really sort of uh, positive guy, isn't he, Edward Fox? And he's just yeah, that sort yeah. of yes, we're gonna do it. Even even that, even if he was in a swamp. Up to his neck, he'll still be going. Yeah, no, nah, I'm all right. It's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm good. Yeah. Excellent, <laughs> yeah. excellent. Um, so yeah, I, I, and I do find that the film kind of goes sort of up and down. So it kind of gives you a down point. Um, and one of my favourite moments is when Robert Redford turns up, and I think he's, um, I think he's eighty second airborne, and he's basically told by Ryan O'Neill, isn't it? That I need someone who can basically take on this bridge which is stupid <laughs> stupid enough to do it yeah someone who's stupid enough to do it that's it yeah <laughs> and he, he doesn't he doesn't shrug off his responsibilities he's like right okay no you know, he, just yeah, shrugs yeah. his shoulders and gets on with it he ends up he ends up tipping out his tea which thinking oh, about right. sort of like rations back then I, I don't know i think a cup of tea a bit a bit of a gem back then wouldn't it do you know what i mean yeah, i think so yeah um, but yeah, he takes on the bridge, um, and he basically says, "Look, you know, we've got to take it from both sides. It's just badass what he says." And um, again, it's he, he takes it on. Uh, I think thirty core. No, is it thirty core? One of the tank regiments comes on the other side, and uh, then you've got that um, overture again, isn't it? Which is kind of quite upbeat because they think, "Fuck That's me, we, right. we've we've taken nine nine, nine million." Um, and then the Germans, oh my God, they're only like eight kilometers away from Arden. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. yeah. Oh, but that's, that's such an uh, iconic scene, though, when they're, they're out in the boats and they're rowing like absolute buggery. Yeah. You know, to get to the uh, other side, and Redford's like going, um, Hail Mary, full of grace. Yeah. Hail Mary, full of grace. Love that. Love that. And then, um, yeah, and you, 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 I really do sort of feel sorry for them as well because it's like, that 
they're asking for these boats and they're just like basically put together by bits of wood and cloth and that, aren't they? And Shitty little boats, yeah. I mean, could you imagine that situation? You know, you're cold, you're probably hungry, morale's not particularly very good. And um, I think uh, John Rasenberger gets shot in the eye, which is quite... Quite oh, horrific. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, it's like, oh no, the bloke from the he bloke just from suddenly Chiefs. turns around, doesn't he? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh fucking hell! It's got Hitting straight, straight through missing. the fucking eye. Oh dear. Um, yeah, so some of, some of the effects are actually really quite good. Yeah, you know, people getting shot left, right, and centre in various different scenes. Yeah, awesome. So you've got like these little pockets of. You've, you've got the main movie on the whole, but then the film feels like it's kind of like isolated in certain areas because then you've got uh, the British paratroopers, which is Anthony Hopkins' character. And I think he plays... Is it John Frost or something like that? Um, and he actually takes on Arnhem. Or he's he's basically there with his squad, isn't he? And they're basically... He, he got there a bit too early, didn't he? Yeah, or, or, yeah. On, on, on time, actually everybody else who turns up late yeah and he he is i mean everybody's a hero to a degree but for me he is a guy that's basically got to that bridge isn't he the objective and with a little bit more support i think he would have done it yeah um but unfortunately he held his own and all of a sudden you've got a film this this would this spot in itself would be a good film wouldn't it because it's like a sort of um alamo situation isn't it where the germans are coming in they're small pocket of resistance. They're getting blown to shit. Uh, but they're hanging on, hanging on to the very end. Yeah. So I think that's what I like this film. It kind of shows weaknesses and strengths on both sides, like with the Americans and the British. You know, we fucked up with the intelligence. Um, Robert Redford had his moment of glory getting the bridge, didn't he? But then it showed him getting pretty much demolished in the boat. And then yeah, it, and then it, it, yeah kind of shows the might of the British paratroopers for them to say, you know, we ain't going to give up without a fight. Um, <laughs> when the, when the, uh, the German officer comes with the flag, <laughs> yeah. the surrender, surrender flag, expecting the, the British to surrender. And they're like, no. <laughs> no. And he's like, okay. <laughs> you know what? It's I suppose I can say this is a proper stereotypical looking Nazi as well. And he, do you know what I mean? It's yes. like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, blonde hair, fucking, you know, black German uniform, fl- flying, flying a flag. And then th- I think this is where our sense of humour comes from as a nation, isn't it? With what he says, the was it the lieutenant or the major? He's got his umbrella, isn't he? And he's oh, like, that's right, yeah. sorry, um, we don't have the facilities to take you boys in. You know, and I'm like, yeah, that's any day of the week, that's what we'd say, definitely. Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you've got some, like I say, that's what I mean, this film kind of goes, it's like a roller coaster, it goes up and down. It's got some really nice moments, it's got some low moments. Um, and I think Richard Attenborough, as a director and the producers and the writers, have done a good job in being able to tell everybody's story here, honestly. Um, everybody's got their faults. and um, Yeah, I, I think I, I, I to- totally agree. It, it shows um, mis- mistakes made, made on, on both sides. I mean, the Germans, yeah, uh, they, they're all expecting... Well, one, one of the guys obviously thinks he's going after him, himself. That's Modal. Yeah. Uh, the other guys are clearly going, well, look, you know, here's, they're going after the bridge. Here's the evidence which we found. He's going, nah, nah, that's fake. It's fake. It's, it, they planted it. You know, there's all that. And then when... Oh, I can't remember his name. The He, he wants to blow up the Nijmegen bridge harvey kruger isn't it he's known. yes yeah, that's right that's it yeah you know and that fails i mean there's always going to be things that fail in in war be it you know logistics or weather i mean obviously you know with the british they had uh or, or the the poles uh they couldn't fly over because of the fog yes yeah it's right. just a ca- catalog of errors you know on, on either side really which is what happens in, in war you know yeah, um, that's a good point, actually. The um, Polish, as well, they kind of got a bum deal here, didn't they, with this? Because at the beginning, when Browning's giving the orders, he's saying, oh, you can take this bridge on, you take this bridge on. And he kind of just, oh, and we've got the Polish in the corner, isn't it? And it's kind of like, 
um, Gene Hackman is just pissed off, isn't he, with everything? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> from, from the off, I mean, he's, he's not a happy bunny at all. I mean, it's great. It's great seeing Gene Hackman playing a Polish um, major uh, or general in this, and um, he, 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 yeah, he does a good job. It, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to think that he's actually Gene Hackman as well. You know, it's it's like wow, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> He's with his big moustache, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like because you've got. I mean, he's, he's he's a big actor. He's got group, all these guys have got screen presence, um, but it is almost like a sort of blink and you miss, isn't it? Because there's so much sort of going on. So much on, talent, you know? yeah. So much talent going so, on. So much talent there. So yeah, man. I bet yeah. there's some testosterone going through there, wasn't there? Do you know what I mean? Oh, so, I can imagine that on, on the, <laughs> the day. Bloody hell. <laughs> And actually, probably directing all that talent must be really bloody difficult, you know, to ensure that everybody's, you know, doing their bit and sticking to the lines and not, you know, adding their own own stuff. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, I I only ever see Richard Attenborough as the old dude from Jurassic Park. Um, so I kind of see him being the same as a director in this, you know, like old dude, white beard. He's got like a little staff with a little bit of amber on the top. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably like fucking beating these actors over. Will you fucking behave? It's my movie. <laughs> I know you're fucking good. You know. It's like... <laughs> <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> That's how I see him as well. So you're not the only one. <laughs> little oh, little really. Gandalf fucking staff thing he's got with his. You shall not pass. Ooh, oh, I'm going on some fucking tangent here. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, but like I say, just um, yeah. On the whole, I think um, going back to what I said earlier, I think it is just um, uh, certainly a blueprint. I can't think of any other film. I mean, we obviously we had a lot of war movies, didn't we? That we watched on a Sunday afternoon, but this one just seemed different. Um, I watched a little bit of it this afternoon, and you just think it just feels like someone's actually got a real, you know, steady cam camera on one of the battlefields back in that time. It just feels like a sort of timeless type movie. Yeah, yeah. No, and actually, and some of the shots I, I, I thought were excellent. There was the, uh, you know, when when the paratroopers are jumping out of the out of the planes, yeah. you know, and actually, you know, man's eye view as they're kind of falling out and you know looking up at the parachute and then looking down at the ground and you know some amazing cinematography going on yeah that's right i mean they must have actually had uh was it were they uh dakotas or the the planes that they used oh uh, i don't Something. know i <laughs> yeah no i'm just getting a little bit sorry um, yeah the the planes that the airborne used uh, I think you're right. I, I can't. I mean, obviously, they didn't have CGI back then, so I'd imagine back in the 70s, they probably had a lot more of those still um, up and running. But yeah. Knocking around, yeah. It, it is a proper. Yeah. It's it, like, like you said, when you watch it, you know, being a kid, it is a proper sort of boys' adventure, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that tank. You know, you know there's, a, you know, tiger tanks and planes and whatever. So. Oh, that's uh, right. Is, is, there, is there anything about the film that you don't like? Well, that's a good question. I think um, this kind of goes on to how I felt like when I was a kid. Um, because I was used to watching a film, I think, usually get around about a two hour runtime. Say, like with uh, Where yeah. Eagles Dare, say, for example, or um, uh, Kelly's Heroes, say. But with yeah. this film. Yeah. Um, I think when I first watched it, it really did feel like a long film. And when you got to the end of it, and then you had that downbeat moment at the end where the um, paratroopers are humming that song, they've basically been defeated. You come away and you think, oh my God. And I actually feel quite exhausted by the end of this film. But yeah, at the same time, it's kind of like a compliment to the film because I think that's how you're supposed to feel. It, it, it well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like as you were saying, it is a roller coaster, roller yeah. coaster of emotions. You see, yeah. you know, the, the fighting, you see the civilian casualties, you're seeing people getting blown up and shot and stuff, and yeah. it's yeah. I mean, no, no war is pleasant. 
No, um, but I mean, at the same time, every time I watch this film, and it's a bit like um, The Great Escape. Every time I watch that, I always think that Steve McQueen is going to be able to get over that fence. Every time I watch it, I always think, oh, this time he's going to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, exactly. And it yeah. used to be like that when I watched it as a kid, funny enough. And so when I watch a bridge, bridge too far, and when Frost has got the bridge on Arnhem, I still I think, oh, is Ferdy Coral going to come on the other side this time? You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. she's going to get there. But, um, but no, it's not really... I, I, I can't really think of anything else. Uh, not that that really is a fault. How about yourself? No, I, that's, I mean, no, it, it is a long film. You know, it's mm. it's two, two hours and 55 minutes. But, I mean, it was weird. I watched this a couple of days ago, and it flew by. Yeah. Most most films of that length, I, I find after about, like, an hour and 45 minutes, sort of two hours, I start looking at my phone, start looking at my watch etc etc but i didn't do that with this film at all it flows so well yeah because it because it has that you know these upbeat moments and then these drop down moments and he you know it's different stories going on so you you know you're intrigued as to how each kind of squad and division are getting on so it doesn't have any sort of real real sort of downtime where there's just you know filler there's no no filler it's all all flow, flows really well. Yes, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, because you, I think that's the that's when you know you're watching a really good film. Is because when you watch it each time, you're kind of looking out for other characters and what else is going on and other bits of detail. Um, I mean, I forgot to mention the James Khan character in this. He's in the Hundred and First Airborne. Oh, and, that's right. Yeah. You know, it, it's quite a nice little side bit. I think this is the reason why Khan took on the role. He said, "If I'm going to do it, I want to do that character." And he's basically guaranteed his um, lieutenant that he'll never die in this battle. And he basically sticks to that, doesn't he? And he pulls the gun out on the doctor, doesn't he? And he says, right, you better go and tend to him or else I'm going to shoot you. Or else I'm going to shoot you. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. And then he, he does get arrested, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, but for like 10 seconds. <laughs> it, 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 if ever Clint Eastwood was going to be in this film, I think that would be it. You know, with the James, James Caan character. But... Um, yeah, no, it's a good chat. It's actually, I'm surprised Clint Eastwood wasn't in this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, nothing against Clint Eastwood. I love him. But you know what? He could actually be the bloke that tear this film up. Because we'll be going, like, there's Richard Attenborough putting all this together, and all of a sudden, we'll probably be sat here going, Yeah, do you remember that bit when Clint Eastwood turned up? It just felt like a Clint Eastwood film, you know? It's like, it's fucking. <laughs> if it just. Didn't... Uh, didn't Clint would do a war film though? He was. Yes, in, yeah, he, he was. Yeah, Kelly's Heroes and um, of course, War Eagles. Course. There, yeah, it's hard, hard to believe that he's actually in a film, isn't it? It's like that, you know. It's, uh, but you know, Clint Eastwood plays Clint Eastwood for me. He's great. I love him, but he's <laughs> he's always Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Just <come> up, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good chap. Um, but yeah, no, I've it's. Um, yeah, it's like I say, it's a pretty solid uh, war film, and I think you're right. It just t- t- to watch this film, I think you need to give it that full three hours and sit down and watch it. Um, some- and, and that's pr- that's probably the the only issue I think is knowing you go, oh, it's three hours long. Yeah, yeah, but um, that's the only thing really. But then it's like I say, it deserves that um, three hours. I don't know whether you could probably do an edited version. I'm not sure, but. Um, is there so talking about war films? Is there another one that you would say is your is your favourite next to a British Two Four? Whilst we're on the subject, I mean that'd be a good conversation to have. Um, probably Guns of Navarone. Ooh, good one. Um, that was that was a go to for me. Um, and then uh, probably post. Um, uh, Second World War, it would be uh, Vietnam War films, which I'm I'm a big big fan of. Oh right, uh, okay. yeah. You know, like Platoon, I think is is top tier for me. I think that's one of the, one of the greats. Yeah, I'm a little part. I've, I've always liked um, Hamburger Hill. That's, that's yeah, one yeah, one. that's a good one. And yeah. obviously, uh, Full Metal Jacket. I think I, I kind of have those as my free uh, Vietnam films from. 
from the eighties, and yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. think they do just great. I think Vietnam films are done very well um, in cinema. Yeah, uh, told yeah. a different. It was a different sort of war, wasn't it? I think it was like the guys going out, probably thinking they're going to fight something like World War Two, and it just turned into something else. Uh, <laughs> you know, Absolute shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but then there's also some some really good newer sort of Second World War films. Um, yep. Oh god, now my brain's gone dead on me. Um, obviously, Inglorious Bastards. Oh yeah, I that was, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was very good. Tarantino having a go. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was excellent. Um, oh, I've just literally just watched one the other day, and I can't think what the hell it is. My brain's gone on me. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, give me, give me a guess what happened in it. There's blokes firing um, the guns. I, it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, the forgotten battle. I've just suddenly remembered uh, the forgotten battle, which is, uh, I think it came out in 2021. Ah. Now this is this is this uh, Dutch film, and it's giving a Dutch perspective of of the sort of Second World War. Yeah, um, yeah, I know. It's on net. Is it a Netflix special? Or it, is, it, on it is. It is. Have you have you seen it? Uh, I've started watching it. Yeah, I've um, yeah, I, I started watching it before I had to go to work, and I'm I haven't watched the rest of it. But um, yeah, look good. Look gritty. Yeah, very good. I highly recommend that. The other and, one, uh, I, the other one I watched, which was good, which is a Netflix special, was the Siege of Jadaville. You ever seen that? No. Go check that out. Ooh. Yeah, it's really good. It's about the um, Irish. In Africa during the Cold War, and basically ah, no, no okay. one no one knew about this this battle because it was basically um, the Irish fighting French legionnaires as a militia, and they thought at the time if this got out this could cause us a lot of shit, so they basically covered it up. But yeah, it's good. It's a really good film. I shall add it to my list. 2016, yeah. the Siege of Jadotville. Siege of Jadotville. Yeah, it's a good siege. Film. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the other one I quite like is Black Hawk Down as well. Um, yeah, that's a classic. Yeah, a classic. I remember going to cinema to go and watch that. Um, but yeah, no, there's some good stuff out there. So, um, well, thank you, Matt. I think um, I think that's about all we can talk about Bridge Too Far, isn't it? I think we covered everything. Uh, yeah, I we've, think so. we've mentioned yeah. Michael Caine and Sean Connery and <laughs> all, all the classic a- actors. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, okay then, Matt. Well, thank you very much for coming onto the show today. It's been great. And, um, no, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. I think you've done a damn fine job considering you've been suffering a little bit as well. So you sound sound really good for the show. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the bloody COVID got me for the second time. But uh, I'm all right. I managed to battle through. Yeah, no, you sound good, man. Um, just before we close the show now, uh, with your podcast, um, what are you doing next? Always like, to, uh, you know, maybe just sort of sell your show a little bit on, on here. So What are we doing enjoy. next? Uh, well, we've just recently released our uh, end-of-year end show, you know, like uh, horror top tens and horror-adjacent top fives and all that malarkey. Uh, our next show we will be doing. Uh, oh God, my brain's gone completely dead. Um, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> I'm not saying this at all. <laughs> nah, I can't right. even. I can't even bloody remember. Oh no! You know, you I know can't what, mate, what, what we're doing. What this sounds like to me. This sounds like. This sounds just like your show. Sounds, <laughs> like, you, sounds like you and Kate talking on your show. Yeah. <laughs> trying to put yeah. stuff together. Literally, yeah, yeah, we're 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 professionals, RJ. We are professionals. <laughs> <clears throat> Just like me, yeah. mate. I, I honestly, mate, I don't really have any plan for my show either. And I'll be honest with you, I've got nothing written down. It's just like I walk down the street and I go, oh yeah, I'll do that film. <laughs> well, that's, I, I think that's a great way of doing it. Yeah, right, just something, yeah. just sort of goes, oh yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. And yeah. then it's a bit like today, getting you onto the show. It's kind of like chuck it on Facebook. And then you said, oh, I like that film. I've gone, yep, come on then. Yep, and then that's it. Then. And it just goes with a nice sort of flow and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, for you, Lovely. Works great. So, there you Lovely. go. <laughs> okay. All right, Matt. Well, listen, um, what I'll do then, I'll just close the show up. So, guys, hope you enjoyed that episode. It's really good to have Matt on the show today. I've really enjoyed chatting to him. It's finally happened. I knew he's going to be a bloke that I'll get on with. <laughs> listen to his <laughs> yeah. show. 
because we're both we from need, the same we, need, time. we need to meet up and have a beer. Definitely. We will do. We'll, maybe we'll do Fright Fest or something this year. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so, a little bit of admin for the show. Uh, I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so go and please uh, check out all the other shows on there, including my other show, which is the Mystery Vault Podcast. Uh, I just released a episode where I talk about dragons. And you can find the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, several other players. If you put in, uh, I was going to say the Mystery Vault. It's not the Mystery Vault. It's uh, <laughs> Bite Size Cinema Podcast. Put it into Google <laughs> and it'll take you to some pl- some place, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Um, and you can find me on Facebook. That's the best place to uh, find me if you want to contact me and say, "Hey, RJ, your fucking World War Two history's <laughs> shit, and you know what the fuck you're talking about." I go, you know what? You want to put you're that right. on a review? I'll, I'll take any sort of review. That'd be all right. <laughs> Give me a one star rating. And I'll go. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Excellent. Somebody thought somebody thinks I'm shit, and I'm really pleased with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's oh, what okay. we're like. <laughs> Somebody's listening. Brilliant. Somebody's listening. They think I'm shit, but they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Right, okay, now I'm sweating like mad here. <laughs> okay, well, on that note, um, keep it bite size, keep it safe, people. See you later. (laughs) Oh my god. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts. Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.